Hey Aquarius, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings. We're going to take what works, leave what doesn't, as with everything in life. And if I don't catch your wavelength or storyline here, check your other major placements. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or any placement that excites you or thrills you. We're going to start off with an intuitive vibe with these Oracle cards. Moonology and Work Your Light Oracle cards. And then we're going to use the Golden Tarot for a more traditional tarot spread. So, let's see here. What do we have here? Okay, that just was... Okay, <laughs> that's how we're going to take that. Ah, wow, that's a book. Okay, so this was... Step out of your comfort zone, North Node. So trying something new, allowing yourself to be uncomfortable while you do it. Man, I have had a couple weeks of that. So trying something new and allowing the discomfort that's natural to that as you learn something new um, to or, or try a different way of doing something. Sometimes we get so stuck in ruts that it can be very difficult to try a different way of approaching a situation or a person or a thing or any kind of knots in our life, but things that aren't, aren't um, I don't know, patterns and habits that can be so hard to even see them. We get so stuck in them. So stepping out of your comfort zone. Let's see here. Oh, a two right here of have faith in your dreams, waxing crescent moon. So something's getting going. Something's starting. We're already on our way and you are meant to have faith. And then I also love fixed moon, hold your vision. So some terrain is going to be covered up. I mean, this is like the same thing, but this is all sweet and lovely. And this is all like, it's going to be hardcore. It's going to be hardcore and it's gonna be difficult and it's gonna make you uncomfortable, but you need to have faith that what you want or what you were dreaming of is coming true. Man, this sounds like an echo of last week. This could be a different storyline, someone else's storyline, or this could be a, a continuation, but it is sounding like a little bit like last week. So holding your vision, fixed moon, rough terrain ahead, a lot of work, a lot of um, almost a harsh environment possibly, um, but you are holding your vision and you're having faith in your dreams. Um, this heart, this fixed moon here seems to embody both of these. So in the moon I'm seeing have faith in your dreams. Uh, things are changing, transforming, growing, developing. Um, this is a, a bit of more of a spiritual vibe. Um, this is the spiritual aspect of manifestation. The, um, holding that vibe, holding that energy that you have and then step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And there's like a lot of steps out of your comfort zone that are going to be going on in this one. This is like, so it's, this is what it looks like. These are like the same card right here. If we combine those. So having faith in your dreams, holding that vision, but also understanding you've got work to do. You've got a lot more discomfort and, um, and I like this step out of your comfort zone because I always see this as a big long hike that you're going on is a big long hike. Um, hmm. It reminds me of a um, hike up. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I used to work at a dude ranch in Colorado and there was this Hans Peak. And it was just basically rock because it was so far above the tree line and it was just rocks and it looks like a, it looked like a little limpet on a beach you know it's just like this almost like a pyramid and um so one full moon i got a bunch of us working at the ranch and we went and hiked up it and the moon was just full and bright and you could see the path and of course there weren't any trees or anything so but it was very difficult it was definitely outside our comfort zone I got altitude sickness several other people got so much altitude sickness that they had to stop right where they were and couldn't continue and just a few of us made it up to the top um, but that whole hike was kind of outside the comfort zone it was in the dark at night um, in, and on this like shale pyramid-ish thing in the middle of Colorado. Anyway, this always reminds me um, a little bit like this guy right here, although it was more symmetrical. But anyway, the point of that is, and I debated sharing that story with you because it's just, 
It's just though every step was further and further out of everybody's comfort zone. But it ended up being a very thrilling um, and exciting hike. Very memorable. So, uh, so that's what I think the metaphor is here is like, keep going, keep going. And you might get some altitude sickness here. You might get, um, you might be sore for a few days. You might, uh, be a little weirded out by all the moonlight shadows, but pretty exciting and amazing view at the top. So keep going, keep having faith. So, um, Yes. Okay. You're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. So you're, you, yeah, this is again, hold your vision, have faith in your dreams. Keep going, keep going. Uh, stop overthinking it. Oh, step out of your comfort zone. The other day I did something and I didn't overthink it. And that was out of my comfort zone so much so that I had to like journal it out and talk it out. Like what just happened? I just did that without overthinking it. it. Was that bad? It was really funny um, because not overthinking it was actually out of my comfort zone. So you're already doing it. Don't overthink it. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep going on this hike. Keep climbing. I like this one. Dance with life. Do something to change your energy. And this is the vibe I was actually getting out of this card is stepping out of your comfort zone was changing up the energy. We get so much in our ruts and doing things exactly the same way, thinking about things the same way. We don't even notice sometimes. So this is changing up the energy, changing up your inner mantra, maybe doing an activity you don't usually do, changing up the energy in some kind of situation, um, dancing with life, making this a dance, much not quite a drudgery trudge up this hillside, um, but making it maybe throwing in some skips in there, making it a dance, um, Changing the energy, dancing with life, moving with it. Mm, I love dancing, like uh, ballroom dancing, because that, it's that interesting energy exchange between two people as they're sort of reading each other. Well, it's the follower that's usually reading the leader, but a good leader is also uh, listening to the follower, understanding what they're prepared for, if they're out of breath, um, what their steps are like, and can lead um, in response to the energy that the follower is bringing. So I really like this dance with life. Um, this is two people, you know, doing interpretive dance. But if you think about ballroom dancing and that energy exchange and the way that the dancers um, position themselves together and sort of connect energetically with the space between them, it's very beautiful. So we're doing that with life. We're kind of responding, initiating, but responding to the things. It's like a lovely energy so we're not just trudging we might be outside of our comfort zone but that doesn't mean it has to be like uh um just you know a a, a brutal hike up this hillside because hold your vision kind of feels like a that but we have the softness coming in here with have faith in your dreams so i feel like this dance with life is bringing in some softness to the situation as well it it's doesn't maybe it's not Maybe there's a lot to do yet and a long ways to go yet, but it doesn't have to be a slog. Uh, do a little dance in the middle of that. Um, we have pillar of light. Your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. So this could be uh, needing to talk, needing to speak out about your truth, about something that's, that's true to you um, and important to you. And also like your vibration is rising as far as like, this idea of we're on a little hike and we're heading up to Hans Peak, right? And we're going to um, hang out at the peak. Like your vibration would be literally rising on a hike. So I kind of like that, um, that that's meeting our little metaphor here. Um, you are rising and that is going to be outside your comfort zone for sure. Anytime we're changing or moving, but I'm definitely getting a sense here that we're not making it a drudgery. And we're not trudging up this hill. We're more or less dancing into sort of a new and better way of doing. So it's not that that being down in the valley is terrible and we should really be up on a peak. It's that we're having an adventure and it needs to be fun and it needs to be an adventure. And we need to enjoy the process of um, getting to a new place in life and learning new things and becoming our next best version. 
keepers of the earth, you are not alone and ancient ancestors stand beside you. I love this. We're well supported. I've been feeling this very strongly lately. I don't know if you have. Um, I don't know if that's just where I'm at right now, but I feel this and I see this very strongly. Uh, well supported. There's a team here, maybe even um, in reality, but also a physical team of people. I mean, yeah, a physical team and a spiritual team helping you, assisting you, um, as you make this sort of climb, as you level up is what I'm seeing with, um, how you interact with life and how you view life and, and your goals in that direction. So you have a, um, you have assistance. You're not doing this alone. You've got, <laughs> yeah, with my hiking metaphor, you know, you got all the other, not all of them, but all your like-minded coworkers from the ranch here with you. And we're going to support each other up this hill. And we're not going to, you know, it was just fine. I felt, um, you know, people couldn't make it. Some people stayed behind with them that also didn't want to continue. And then others of us, I think there were only three of us, maybe four of us that made it to the top. But um, so maybe I'm the only one that liked it. But anyway, or it was fun. It was good. It was a, it was a hike and there was well supported. So. All right, Aquarius. Is your past, your present, your inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, your to-do list, and your possible outcome? Interesting that that showed up. Huh. All right, well, let's get into it. In the recent past, you were the empress. Um, this was being very comfortable, having what you needed, feeling like you had everything that you needed, um, really be able to sit back and enjoy life, um, an abundance, um, an ability to share and ability to, uh, pass on, um, what out of your abundance, sharing out of a sense of generosity, being comfortable, feeling secure, feeling really good about where you're at in life and, um, and sufficient and, and ha having enough and being enough. Um, and then in the current situation, we have the world, sort of the end of an era here. Is it the end of this Empress era? The end of being comfortable and, and sitting in repose. We have this world card. Um, so in this one, she just has one baby that she's taking care of. And in this one, she's protecting a whole school. Um, there's a, just layers and layers of protection here, which we're also getting from this Keepers of the Earth. But as things change and as things go on, um, as the world changes, you are protected, but the world is changing. So this is um, big changes outside of our control, um, things coming in of their own timing that maybe this could be something coming in that you wanted, um, but have not been able to, in a way, turn the key to open up, open that up. This could just be a big change, a new era of your life. Um, you're in the midst of, of, of that. I mean, the world card is just a big giant ass card, right? It's a big old card. Um, it's the world. It's the whole world. The world's changing. So, um, so it's a big season change for you and your life. The season is changing and you are protected in this change. Uh, you are protected in this change, but the world, but your life is changing. And so those bigger changes don't often happen overnight. They happen, you know, over a series and we can look back and be like, that year was uh, the, what, the year that everything changed, everything shifted for me or something like that. And that's sort of what this seems like is that's the kind of like year you're in or the era you're in where there's a big shift. Hmm. We were talking a little bit about leveling up here, especially, I mean, just, just changing your level. I don't want to say leveling up because it makes it sound like there's like a competition or there's, there's people higher or lower. People are just at different places. And, um, I don't really see a lot of higher or lower. I just see different, different ways of relating to the, to the world. And we all do them maybe in different orders and in our, in our own order. So this is a shift, but as I'm saying the word shift, I'm thinking about shifting a car. I'm thinking about, um, 
getting up into a, a higher gear here um, and changing our energy and the way that we're relating to life and stepping out of our comfort zone. So I'm almost hearing a car sort of in that pause where the clutch is in and it's that moment between the two gears and um, and then we're about to, to enter in a new gear with, with new, um, a new, yeah, <laughs> with a new sound to do it, a new rooming sound. So, so yeah, the, 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 there's a shift in energy here. Um, and in the way that you relate to life and in the way your life is going, a season change accompanied with a shift in your own energy. Um, and then in your, um, in your hopes and fears, prioritization what are you prioritizing what it needs to be prioritized um, and I've just recently seen these two little debate teams arguing their pro con lists down here you know they've got their little lists and they've they're developing their arguments and they're gonna um, debate with each other what is what is the highest priority what's the highest good what needs to be focused on so there's a lot of options um, and and choices that might need to be made and you might be a little bit worried about that how are you going to prioritize things because you're if you're shifting into a totally different way of interacting with life then some things that were high priority before become lower priority well you know nobody nobody um it can be hard to imagine that desire to shift an opportunity to shift priorities before you experience it like it can be really hard to imagine so many people for very good reasons are going to go back to work after they have a baby but a lot of people once they actually have the baby and see the baby and then they can rethink different priorities okay maybe saving quite that much for retirement wasn't that good a lot of people don't have that option and a lot of people don't want that option and that's fine but for the people but but there is a certain number of people that can't imagine the shift of priorities until they actually are in the middle of it and so there's not a lot of good in like pre-imagining shifting priorities because once your priorities naturally shift like you know it's not a it it's a more natural choice once you actually have the options in front of you once you actually you know have your child um it's the 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 priorities for most people shift just automatically it's not like oh yes now i have to go look after the, it's like this whole hormonal thing shifts your priorities for you so you don't need to um to to do that part uh, you don't need to force that part because the the hormones and just the natural biological um mechanism is going to prioritize that more for you so it can be daunting to fear that to look ahead to that to uh, shifting priorities um but part of it is that um that the those priorities are going to just very naturally shift once you get there but you're definitely thinking about how you can move your priorities around what to prioritize um, what to choose, what to pick. Um, there's kind of, there might be an inner debate about um, how important certain things are and how not important what you want to spend your time and money on, how you feel about things. Um, just a lot of overwhelming options, uh, possibly some debate. Um, and I do see Seven of Cups as prioritizing and trying to figure out what you want in your heart, um, trying to figure out what it is that you do want. Um, and, you know, I feel like these little debate teams, these angel debate teams down here are studying, they're figuring it out. They're debating pros and cons of each one. Um, yeah, so that's going on in your inner landscape, some sort of inner debate, inner prioritization, uh, trying to figure out what you really want, what you really, really, really want. Um, and then in your uh, issue here, we have the three of cups, but it's reversed. So there could be um, a lack of community, a lack of communion, and, or not feeling that, not feeling part of a group, not feeling like you're um, able to share openly and freely, not feeling connected to other people. I mean, that's easy to feel right now. But maybe disconnecting from somebody or disconnecting from a group that you're normally very connected with. Um, not sharing not, or not feeling like you're able to share your deepest feelings, your deepest emotions, um, and maybe even possibly could be a wandering eye of somebody in this situation 
or scenario here not necessarily but it could be I mean everybody's got a wandering eye at some point you can't like control your eyeballs that much um, but the action and activity is a different situation but um, so anyway could be um, yeah just not sharing not not having community not feeling a sense of community because you could be in communities technically but not feeling like you belong there or that that you're that you're able to bring your fullest self there or your true feelings into your community or into your group could just be also just really literally not being able to hang out with people right now and that might be maybe you'd normally discuss stuff normally debate things and maybe that's part of the shift you know because sometimes when our priorities are shifting and our life is shifting we end up needing to you know find a new group to support the new level that we're at to support the new um thing oh this is what i found interesting is we have this like not having a supportive sort of friend group or tribe here which is fine for periods of time because especially as you're shifting priorities in a big major life shift not all of those friends are would even be able to come with you anyway so um, but then we're having this keepers of the earth so I'm feeling like this is more reminding you that you have spiritual connections and spiritual support even when you don't necessarily have it in a friend group or um, a community um, but you do have it spiritually so I found that both of those cards coming out in this reading interesting um, and then uh, in your environment you have five of coins this could be a sense of poverty a sense of uh, looking at what you don't have um, he has emotional support but and he is physically safe in the sanctuary but is very focused on all the coins all the time and all the money that he doesn't have so this could be somebody in your environment this could be you this it's a very it's a little bit of a harsh place um, dealing with financial and time constraints and the someone here um, there something in your environment is more focused on the constraints than on what you have more focused on a sense of poverty there could there could be poverty around you just not enough time not enough money um, around you you could be safe you could be um, you know you could have some level of support although we're saying that you don't you might be feeling like a lack of support like where's my team I'm I don't have a team this could be about really feeling that lack of support like who's gonna you know I don't have enough time who's gonna who's gonna do this who's gonna help me out with my time here time management um, or this could be money I don't have enough money um and this is preventing you from i don't know it's something in your environment there's just a lack of money there's a sense of poverty of something time money um help um in your environment uh, that's causing you to feel a little bit left out a little bit left out of the cold or just not well supported but we're saying you are well supported spiritually if not physically right now we have two cards saying you don't feel very well supported somehow with um in reality either through friends money or time or something like that this is a funny one but i think i'm getting it um this is your to-do list here I'm <laughs> your to-do list here's the devil card be the devil uh this is like a, a devilish impish little message here coming in here um shocking um, I don't know being a little addicted maybe addicted to these changes I feel like this is also um, if we want to say something like this dancing with life uh, changing the energy doing something to change up the energy so being this little I don't want to call it the devil I want to call it an imp or a or a little demon and um, it could have to do with addiction it could be facing an addiction it could also be facing um, which has isolated you from people um, so you could be facing an addiction it could also be becoming obsessed with something so the devil is typically anything that separates us from our path from our connection to the divine but this is being we're being asked to enter the devil energy to enter a compulsive energy enter a I just feel impish energy here 
And then that's part of sort of the changes, the season change that we're going through or the dynamic change that we're going through is there needs to be a little bit of a dance here, a little bit of an impish, but these people seem miserable, <laughs> but except for the devil, the devil seems like he's having a real good time. It's a really interesting card to have show up in this spot is the devil card, your to-do list. So it could be dealing with um, facing obsessions and, and, and acknowledging obsessions. It could also have to deal with like bringing this imp-like energy, this not being holier than thou, not being a, a holy, uh, perfect energy, um, allowing for your own imperfections. Especially if we're doing um, a, a shift, our vibration is rising and we're going to be the oracle, we might need to be um, allowing ourselves to be bad at something, not very good at something. <laughs> it's an interesting card there. <laughs> um, and then where we're going is this Eight of Swords. I feel like if we don't bring in this imp devil energy, this is a warning of where we're going to end up. A sense of feeling trapped, trapped in our minds. This is absolutely, where's our don't overthink it. This is absolutely the overthinking it card. Overthinking it, self-crippling thoughts, um, f still feeling trapped, feeling stuck in an energy, um, and overthinking something. Um, that's the card, the Eight of Swords. The path is open. She's not actually bound. She just thinks she is. And she's very much up in her head about, uh, I'm trapped, I'm trapped, I'm trapped. So I feel like this devil energy is here to like, change the energy, change, make it, add some skips to this hike and, um, and if you don't change the energy, I feel like you're going to get stuck in a sort of, um, you're going to continue to be trapped in your head, trapped in some negative thinking, something like that. So, Let's see here. Being led down your path. Your path is before you now. Even if you sometimes lack confidence to trust in the path that you are upon, know this. You cannot miss your destiny. I shall guide your feet and inspire your heart to keep you true to your rightful divine life path. Trust me. Trust yourself. Take your journey now. I really like that because we're getting, you're already doing it. You're already on some kind of path. You're already on the hike. You've already committed to it. No one, there, no, the hiking book has been put away. We're already on the path. I really like that guidance here. Um, holding your vision. We're head, already headed somewhere. Keep that in mind. Don't, don't uh, start doubting it halfway up the mountain. Having faith in your dreams. I feel like this is all about, um, you are already on some kind of path. You're already going there. You're already getting there. Um, and trust me, trust yourself, um, your feet being guided, being true to your rightful divine life path. I really like this for a summary here of, of what's going on. You're already on it. Some of the difficulties you might face are uh, prioritizing, um, friendship issues, lack of, lack of a peer group that's really supporting you through this. Um, you might be overwhelmed with um, time management issues and not feeling like you have enough time or you have enough money for this path and what you need to do, um, but not overthinking it and uh, stepping out of your comfort zone. I feel like, I feel like this right here, she needs, this is her comfort zone. She's very comfortable being trapped here, but you need to make sure that you're stepping out of that. And I feel like this devil energy, this impish devil energy is going to help you step out of your comfort zone, dance with life. Um, and sort of dance um, down this path um, that you're already on. So, all right, Aquarius, I hope that that was helpful for you. That was really long. I feel like I was slow and pokey and a little dozy during that. But anyway, that's what it is. My energy is my energy when I come into these things. So, um, so anyway, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for your likes and your comments and your subscribes. I very much appreciate them.